are now watching The Beach. Happy Pokemon Day, everyone! It's the one holiday of the year. We're out of so much anticipation and so much hype that the night before Pokemon Day, I Pokemon sleep in. With Nintendo Directs, I'm always gonna wake up earlier than usual to watch those because remember, I only like Mario games. Twitter said so, so of course that's the case. Me when I only like Mario. But the thing is, I still was curious to see what this Pokemon Presents had going for it. With these presentations for Pokemon, a lot of the times, there are announcements of pretty much nothing. I remember there was one back in August or September of 2023 that pretty much was a nothing burger of a presentation. So it pretty much should have been a Pokemon Sleep presentation. But the thing is, with a Pokemon Presents, it's the only kind of Nintendo Direct that you actively go into not wanting many major announcements. And there's a very specific reason why. The current state of Pokemon has not been mid, it hasn't even been bad. It has been atrocious. Before getting into the Pokemon Presents itself, I did want to bring up something that I'm sure many of you are curious about. Why am I making a Pokemon Presents review video when I said that I axed Pokemon Sword and Shield versus Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? I know there are going to be the Pokemon fanboys out there like, Ugh, he said he wouldn't be making Pokemon videos and he's back doing it? Ugh. Can't you just be grateful? You're just unlucky. No, the thing is, with a review discussion like this, it doesn't take very long to do. But with something like Pokemon Sword and Shield versus Scarlet and Violet, that would take days, weeks to do. And unfortunately, Pokemon videos tend to underperform unless your entire channel is dedicated to Pokemon. Also, it's pretty clear I despise the games. So for Trash or Treasure episodes, I'd rather put in all my effort towards games that I feel either deserve recognition or have been misunderstood. The two that come to mind that I'm working on right now are Mario vs. Donkey Kong and Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. So with that out of the way, what did I think of the Pokemon Presents itself? Well, the presentation was only 12 minutes long, which was good because a majority of it was just filled with mobile game announcements, stuff coming to Pokemon Unite, the Pokemon game made by one of the worst companies in the world, which I won't even touch with a 10-foot pole. Stuff about the trading card game coming to mobile devices. It felt like I was watching BlizzCon 2018 with all the mobile game stuff. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys have phones, right? Well, the thing is, I understand that there's going to be a lot of mobile game stuff with Pokemon. Some might even say Pokemon Go caused the downfall of the series. However... I just can't get disappointed with the announcements of mobile games and stuff coming to mobile games. Because remember, I want these Pokemon Presents to have as little new games as possible. But with that being said, a lot of it does feel like filler. And there is something they could have announced, they could have had ready for this, that wouldn't take too much effort to make, is something fans have wanted for many years, yet it still hasn't happened. And that's having Pokemon Gen 1 through 3 come to Nintendo Switch Online. We have Game Boy, we have Game Boy Advance, and many people want to revisit those games on their Nintendo Switch. It's been two years now, and we have yet to see them come to Switch Online. To be fair, the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance library is absolutely pathetic. There's pretty much nothing there, but how hard could it be to have the Pokemon games on Switch Online? They were on the 3DS Virtual Console, Gens 1 through 2 were, and they were the best-selling Virtual Console games on the 3DS. So I don't understand why they're not doing it, why it's taking so long. Maybe they would do a compilation of the classic games, I'm not sure. It's just something that they should have done, yet they didn't. At this rate, and the same goes for Mother 3, why even bother waiting for Nintendo to put their games on Switch Online? It's obvious that they don't care too much. And what you're better off doing, get yourself a Miu Mini, get yourself an Ambernick, and if you want to play Pokemon Emerald, just get the game, put it on there, you're good to go. No waiting, that's what I've been doing. You also don't have that ugly ass microwave border that Switch Online games have. With Mother 3, that game hasn't been officially localized by Nintendo, 
but there is an excellent fan translation for it. So in the meantime, playing Game Boy Advance games on your Miu Mini or Ambernick is your best bet. But with this Pokemon Presents, a lot of this stuff was filler and the lack of games coming to Nintendo Switch Online was disappointing. I didn't really mind the filler games too much, but the latter, yeah, that was a bummer. However, there was one announcement that there is a lot to talk about, and it could actually be, and get ready for this, good. With the current state of Pokemon, the main problem has been a lack of time to develop these games. They've been on a cycle of releasing a new generation every three years. Back then, it worked on a handheld because those games didn't take nowhere near as long to make. They were sprite-based, the handhelds were far less powerful than the Nintendo Switch, and yeah, it was doable. But obviously now, the three-year cycle is just not enough time. Look at Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Those games have some of the worst optimization I've ever seen. Glitches galore, and the games visually are the most appalling and ugly games I've ever seen. And the thing is, I honestly cannot understand how people defend it. There's nothing good about them. Everything from the game design to the optimization, I found to be absolutely appalling. I guarantee you, if it wasn't a Pokemon game, it would be ranked among Cyberpunk 2077 and Sonic 2006 as some of the worst games of all time. And of course, people defend it because it's Pokemon, but another common excuse is, oh, they had to release it because of the cards and the anime. It's an entire psych- No, nope, no excuses. I'm so sick of hearing that. You act like other series don't have merchandise and stuff like that following it. Super Mario Bros. Wonder had the plushies after it. Oh, they had to release it. Well, I'm sure because of those plushies, Super Mario Bros. Wonder turned out to be a broken, ugly game. No, not the case at all. You know what Super Mario Bros. Wonder had? No deadline, and it had time to cook. And with these Pokemon games, a lot of the problems have to do with them being rushed out. There are other problems, sure, but that is the main catalyst why the games turn out the way they do. So the good news about this Pokemon Presents is there were no black and white remakes, which is great. Those games, if you're gonna remake them, you gotta do it in the best way possible, and after the fiasco that was Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, I'm very wary about remakes going forward, but the good news is that there is a new mainline Pokemon game coming, but not until 2025, that being Pokemon Legend Z A. I'm not sure what the A stands for, could be Alpha, but regardless, this might be very promising for the future of Pokemon. And the reason being is not only its 2025 release date, meaning that they have more time to cook, but it seems like they're listening to a lot of the fan feedback and things fans have wanted for many years. Kalos is always brought up. With Pokemon X and Y, many found them to be good games, but the lore of Kalos is underdeveloped. That was a game in dire need of a third version, or more expansion on the story and lore of the Kalos region. And it seems that that is exactly what Pokemon Legends ZA is going to do for Kalos, just like how Legends Arceus was to Sinnoh. At the end of the teaser trailer, there was the return of Mega Evolutions confirmed, which Mega Evolutions are often seen as the best generational gimmick, and many, including myself, have not understood why they haven't returned. With the trailer, it was confirmed that none of it consisted of actual gameplay footage, which, considering the footage they showed, which was Pikachu in a VR world, I'm not sure how I would feel about the entire game looking like that. But the thing is, if Pokemon Legends ZA is what it seems it is, a Pokemon game that's ambitious and has enough time to cook, something that's essentially Pokemon Z, and brings back Mega Evolutions, this could very well be very exciting and be a renaissance for the Pokemon series and it could bring it back into being truly great. However, this is where the cautiously optimistic part comes into play, because it's still Pokemon, and it's still Game Freak. When Pokemon Legends Arceus was announced, there was a very similar idea of them breaking the cycle, because at the time, we knew about Pokemon Legends Arceus coming, 
which was slated for 2022, and it was confirmed that Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were outsourced to Ilka, making it seem that Game Freak was breaking the cycle, finally having more time to develop the games. But after Legends Arceus released, it was revealed that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet would be coming later that year. So there very well is the possibility that they release Pokemon Legends ZA, and it turns out to be a good game, but is not as polished as it could have been and definitely needed more development time. Then shortly after, they could release Gen 10, which turns out to be just as awful as Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I'm really hoping that's not the case. I'm assuming that there probably won't be another Pokemon Switch game after Pokemon Legends ZA, but if anything else, it confirms that the Nintendo Switch 2 will likely not be coming this year. It seems it is here to stay until at least next year. Overall, the Pokemon Presents itself had a lot of filler and it was disappointing we didn't see Pokemon games coming to Switch Online. But the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA is so far something that's promising. Something to be cautiously optimistic for. I'm hoping and I'm really hoping this will be the grand return to Pokemon, that it's the renaissance for the series, and the fact they listen to fan feedback when it came to Kalos, that is a really good sign. I can't be too excited yet, but regardless, I think this could be some very good news. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, and as always, keep calm and da-da on.